meeting to order. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Tonight is a regular board meeting of the Richmond Township Board of Trustees. It's Wednesday, November 11th at 2020 at 7 p.m. Would everyone please stand and join the pledge? I pledge to the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here. Here. Next item on the agenda uh, is a presentation of the agenda. <clears throat> I would like to make two additions of any business. I would like to um, add 13C PDR pledge and 13D adoption of resolution 2020-13. Are there any other changes? I ask that uh, 8DD and TT update be moved on to. Uh, I guess between 16 and 17, um, which request that we go into closed session on that issue. Are there any other any other changes? Hearing none, the agenda will stand as amended. <clears throat> uh, next item under the agenda is public comment. And I'm going to first ask Representative Yarch if you would please come up. Maybe come up here. Welcome. I don't know if you can get around. Maybe you have to come around. There <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just turned 50, but I can get over So uh, he has a presentation that he'd like to make to Treasurer Salkar. Okay. Treasurer Salkar, I just want to thank, you know, congratulations to everyone who got re-elected, and for those who are retiring, and thank you for your service. Uh, and it's a, uh, for everyone who ran, who was elected, I would mean, appreciate everyone who put their name out there, and put their name out on the ballot, uh, whether you win or lose, would you put yourself in the public domain to be your ideas to be criticized and to discuss. So I appreciate everyone participating in the process. I am very happy that I was reelected. You know, this is just going to have to be serving the Richmond County for another two years. So uh, that's why I should, so uh, again, I'll make the available to all of you. So uh, as I said, the, but my great words and treaties for coming down, coming today, is to acknowledge Treasurer Zolka for all this time. So I have a tribute here for him. So I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to highlight uh, since the beginning of this millennium, Treasurer's office sought for the betterment of our community, has consistently committed his time and large efforts to ensure that we continue to advance Richmond Township. He started contributing his insight on ideas to the Richmond Township Planning Commission, then in 2003, he was serving our community by contributing his time and energy to the Richmond Township Board of Trustees. Uh, I'll just say there can be little doubt that the Village of Board of Treasurers all complied to his responsibilities this very small to continue to create rewards for the people of Richmond Township. This commitment to the improvement of our community has truly made it a better place to call home. And this is uh, signed by myself and uh, Senator Lovers. So I'd like to lift uh, uh, our appreciation for all the years of service.
Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Next item on the agenda is the treasurer's report. Bob would like to review that for us, please. Okay, you have in your packet the written treasurer's report with a small amendment that was due to uh, the change in Michigan class that I did not have the records for when I did the treasurer's report. I'm going to uh, do this a little differently tonight since this is the last treasurer's report I'm getting. So uh, rather than read the numbers into the uh, record, I think the record speaks for itself in terms of uh, that being on the website. I do be able to indicate that the total that we have in the township is one million two hundred sixty thousand eight hundred ninety-three dollars and sixty-three cents. I rarely go into some other issues on, as far as the treasury report. In 2008, I was elected treasurer for this community. During my 12 years as township treasurer, I've attempted to serve this community in that capacity and make decisions with this board of trustees. We as a board have made many decisions which I personally consider very beneficial to this township. We have assisted along with Lennox Township in having a new Richmond Lennox EMS station number one being built. We have developed a good relationship with our neighbors community in the city of Richmond, which has allowed our residents to participate in the Suburban Library Cooperative through the city of Richmond, and have our township ordinance enforcement assisted by officers from the city of Richmond Police Department. We have a long-term garbage collection contract which allows for garbage pickup and recycling by township residents at a reasonable yearly fee. We are debt-free. Repeat that, we are debt-free. No outstanding loans to pay. We have purchased land for the township next to our township hall with an expectation that we will eventually use for township residents as a township park. But most of all, I am proud of the accomplishments the Treasurer's Office has made over the last 12 years. We started in 2008 with an investment total on township assets of $221,000. That investment amount went down to 87000 in 2011, but in 2012 it went to $123,000, in 2014 it went to $174,000, in 2015 it went to $255,000. 2017 it went to 313,000. In 2019 it hit 373,000. And this year it's at 319,000 after purchasing the township property. Our township CPA, John Gideon, says we're very fiscally conservative here and the growth of our fund balance and our investments is evidence of our board's fiscal conservatism. Our general fund balance as of June 30th, 2012, eight years ago was 676,000 roughly. On June 30th, 2019, it was 1,500,000. Finally, I would be remiss if I did not say I'm very proud of each of my fellow board members. I've seen Bernie Cohen be the rock of this board, always bringing the farmer's position to the board and being a friend and a competent, competent to me. I watched Ms. Greenia and Ms. LaFontaine develop in their positions as supervisor and clerk. I still remember the day when I told each of them that they could handle their responsibilities in both positions when they first stepped into those positions as supervisor and clerk. They have each done a damn good job in both positions. Last but not least, I've seen Chris DeVos grow and develop as a trustee on this board, offering valuable advice and opinions, and now having reached the step of becoming the next supervisor of this great township. My, sage, my only sage advice to him will be to always keep the township values and history in mind when moving forward in that new position. In conclusion, I've always tried to be an analyzer of issues coming before this board, offering opinions based on my legal background and analysis. I know those questions sometimes cause concern, but I've always had, had as my goal what is in the best interest of this council. I will miss these meetings. No, not really. <laughs> but I miss you all. <laughs> Thank you for all you've done. I do have an uh, additional comment I want to make. For the board of guests, 
regarding the, the new treasure. Over 40 years ago, I met this younger lady who transformed my life. When I met her, she was funky, willing to be carefree, and very unsure of herself. I watched that woman become a competent, built a legal system, who worked for some of the most prominent law firms in the Detroit metropolitan area. I also had the pleasure of having her run my sole practitioner law office, the Office of Energy Legal System, Richmond from 92 <coughs> through 2000. I've seen her develop office skills, service skills, and dealing with clients in the judicial system. In 2008, when I was elected treasurer for this community, she became my deputy treasurer. During my 12 years as township treasurer, I have relied extensively on this lady, who has now become your township treasurer, to help fulfill my requirements in this position. She has been my backbone in the treasurer's office the entire time. Although she may be somewhat reluctant to stand before this community and express her opinions to guide this community in the next four years, I know she has come a long way since I met her over 40 years ago, and I'm confident she will perform her duties professionally as the elected township treasurer and member of the board of trustees. Finally, Years ago, when her father died, I indicated as eulogy that I thought she had a big heart in the manner she cared for people, something she obtained from him. Now she will share that heart and caring attitude with his board. I know if he was here today, he would be very proud of her. I know I am. Good luck in the new journey of your life. That's it. Memphis, uh, correctly this time, has given us their request for uh, collection on uh, our summer tax bill of their Memphis School Board um, millage for 2021. Uh, we received a letter request, so I've asked the board now to approve that request so we can collect their tax in the summer of 2021. Okay, uh, so a motion would be in order to approve the request for Memphis Community schools to collect their, uh, sorry, summer taxes for 2021. Is there a motion to that order? I'll make a motion. Is there a support? Or. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion is carried. Next item has been moved on to the end of the agenda. Um, we are going to move on to farmland preservation. We're going to let you go ahead. Okay. Do you want me to do that now? Yeah, you know, I had I had added it down uh, further, but why don't, why don't we go ahead while we're talking about it, and then okay. we, we will have addressed it. We'll skip over that on the agenda. Okay. Okay, that way everybody knows. Okay. Uh, yes, we did have, our, uh, we did finally have a meeting. The state is doing another cycle of why we had our meeting. We had to set up a, a kind of like a timetable of when the application would be to be turned, turned in. The state has uh, approximately $1.9 million available this time. And so what we, and they have to have the applications in by the 28th of uh, December. So we set our date at, to be uh, December 3rd for any applications to be brought to the, uh, the committee. The committee will then turn them over to the uh, County for the planning and economic development, they will score the, the things and then send them on to the state, prepare them and have them sent on to the state on by the 28th. Uh, the, the state will probably then make their decision probably sometime in February or early March of next year. Uh, the only, the state, or the county, excuse me, the county has uh, already offered another $4,000 towards the committee. We have just received $4,000 from them. They're already assuring us another $4,000 to, to help with this. Uh, I, I, I am going to reapply again. You've seen the application. We'll talk about that later. I'll go into a little more depth there. 
uh, we're setting another meeting probably uh, at the end of uh, November. If we haven't set a definite date, but we're going to uh, meet to see how many applications we got. We did have two other farms in Richmond Township acquire about this. Uh, the Spencers have asked about it. I, they know about this. I don't know if they're going to apply, but uh, they also know about it. And uh, Jim Versenall has been inquiring about it, and I'm not sure if he's going to apply. That's where some of the, this might be a stickler. If they do come and apply, we might have to call a special meeting or a phone thing in order to approve those, because we have to approve that we're interested in those pieces of property before December 3rd if they want to get these applications in on time. So I was told by Supervisor Trade Township it could be done on a phone thing, but I don't know if that's if we want to do that. And I, if no applications come in, it won't be a problem. But if they do, and if they'd like to get in on this cycle, which we would like to get them in if they do apply, we might have to do something kind of quickly with that. Is this an approval of your application? Just, just an approval to say that, yes, Richmond Township is interested in buying this crop. Somebody comes in and, and it's not an area we want, we might say, we're not going to try it. You know, we don't want to say this or if they only, if it doesn't really coincide with our master plan and, and where what we, we have an area set up, the ones on one of our maps here, the prime area where we want to uh, say, preserve that land. So if all three of you were to apply, you, yeah. think you can indicate approval of the township that any of those three could? Yes, yes. The town, township doesn't have to do any grading or anything. All they do is just say, yes, these are applicable applications and we're interested. Then the township would go, and, or the county would go and score them, and then we turn them into the, into the state. So that's where we're at this time. We'll go into a little more depth into the application thing. Uh, there's a few other comments I want to make about the actual application when we get to that point. So you would like to make that later when we're when we Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any questions from Vern? Any more questions? No? Uh, okay, the next item on the agenda is the building report. So uh, do you want do you want to do the approval document? I thought we just decided before we were going to move it. I will leave it up to you. If, if you wanted to do it now, great. Because the one you have on there is about the money, isn't it? Um, we have the PDR application, which is what you were speaking of yeah. now, and we had talked about how the township was, uh, had uh, prior to that, yeah. made a motion to approve some expenses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's actually a couple of steps. We're going to have to approve, yes, that we approve this piece of property, and then yes, we approve the expense. Right, and then the PDR committee did send us uh, the VFX, I believe, yesterday, asking for yes, our yes. pledge. So that is a different way. Oh, okay. Okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. O okay, so do you want to do this now or do you want to move on? Well, we can do it right now then. Okay. Let's, let's look at just a quick glance at the application. So what we did with the application, just, it's the same one, uh, being that it's a, such a quick thing, I just resubmitted the one that I had done. Went back and re-signed it, redated it, and uh, Kathy uh, re-signed it, redated it. And the part from the, uh, the part from the two, which you see on there, is from the uh, NRC. The the, town, the committee decided that that would be accepted as it was presented last time because all that is is verifying the property is agricultural property and it's worth, worth preserving. So we didn't, we didn't go back and have to get these signs. So it's uh, Mark Walter and he's probably going to reapply and I feel he's going to be doing the same thing. So okay. that's why that is. The only other thing I wanted to bring to your attention is that, is that since the last time I enrolled in this, I went and, and, and have, have had our farm is environmentally uh, verified uh, in crop crop position and through the meat program. What the meat program is, is I think if you read the letter on the back there, 
the Michigan Agricultural and Environmental Insurance Program is an initiative that the Department of Ag and the Federal Development and over 50 industry <coughs> agencies, universities, conservation, environmental partners have created. And what this is, you have to meet certain requirements. There's three, there's four things that these can become verified. One is cropping, one is livestock, one is uh, homestead, and one is forestry. Uh, I got verified so far in cropping, and what you have to do to, to get verified in that, you have to keep records of uh, your fertilizer applications, your planting applications, what you're planting, your uh, manure applications, if you're spreading manure, where you have spread it, cage you have spread it. You have to prove that you're keeping these records. I had a lady come out from, uh, I had a consultant or a gentleman <coughs> through the process from Davis, and then a, a lady from uh, Record Ridge, I think, came out and did the verification. And the state looked very highly at this. If, if, if they're preserving they land, us. they, they look. And that's really last time why we lost out. This was one of the major reasons why we lost out. So I it's good they have this time. You need to do this if you really want to get involved in it. So I started that, and I, hopefully I'm going to try to get him to be verified in livestock and in homestead. And the homestead it would be like uh, where you store your, you use the field where you store your spray, and you keep it. It has to be in a in container that can't be bleached out. Fuel has to be a certain distance from wells and, and stuff like that. In livestock, it would be how are you controlling runoff from a farm and, and, stuff, and stuff like that. So working towards that. And then also, the, they, uh, this was not really the reason why I did the, uh, the citizens planner, but they look very highly. They also give you points for, they actually have a planning commission that has uh, members that are doing stuff like the citizens plan are continuing at it. And so uh, I, I have just completed that class, so that's probably going to help us score a little higher there, too. So that's, that's the application, and then the other one is, uh, like I say, all we need to do now is to say, yes, we're interested in this property, and then the other one is the committee is asking for $1,000. So we're looking for two motions. Yeah. One is a motion would be in order to um, approve uh, approve uh, the application of permit trees of yeah. for the PDR money. Yeah. And the other one, we have other pledge, but we can do them both now, uh, would be to approve uh, a motion to uh, pledge. Last year it was 1000 and in my memo I put 1000 yeah. but they're only asking for 500 yeah. uh, to the PDR Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Move to approve the application of the uh, burning the trees of corn for the uh, PDR application and also to approve the uh, payment of the $500 to the Corn County Agriculture PDR Committee to assist in the application. Is there support? A support. Is it, were we doing 500 or 1000 That's how we did 1000 I think. Are they only asking for 500 yeah. Yeah, I think we did a thousand last time, uh -huh. but I'm not going to. I will not. Uh, I have I have Okay. All right. Uh, is there any further discussion? Okay. Thank you. I would request a roll call vote that I want to stay in the vote. Okay. Okay. Sure, Bob Sulkin. Aye. Chris DeVos. Aye. Kathy LaFontaine. Aye. Cindy Greenland. Aye. And Vern Coleman Upstein. Okay, awesome. All right, uh, now we can move to the legal legal report. Most of us get a legal report. I think, uh, you know, we can see um, the law. Uh, got the thing here that will uh, kind of separate the employee work area from uh, the public to some degree with regards to um, matters related to COVID and other viruses. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, there's still, I understand that uh, Chris is working with Henderson Glass on having another uh, hole cut in the uh, glass partition area. Uh, for a few, we'll slide papers back and forth through it and whatnot. Let us know the status of that Christmas. She had said yesterday they were uh, supposed to be here tomorrow. Got it. 
Whereas it is the desire of Richmond Township Board to give appropriate acknowledgement and recognition to individuals <coughs> who rendered invaluable service on its behalf to the citizens of Richmond Township. And whereas Robert Salter, currently Richmond Township Treasurer, has been of undeniable great and selfless service to the residents of the township in many capacities. And whereas in September of 2000, Robert Salter began his service when he was appointed to the Planning Commission to fulfill a term vacated, and again in December of 2001 for a full term, where during the time of his service on the Planning Commission, he helped to guide the township through the RT 2000 local home community issue, sharing his knowledge of law with other members of the Planning Commission and the Township Board. And Whereas in January 2003, Robert Salka was appointed to fill a seat on the Township Board as a trustee when it was vacated. And whereas on November, in November of 2008, he was formally elected as treasurer for Richmond Township, and then again in 2012 and 2016. And whereas Robert Salka has proven to be an exceptional steward of the Township taxpayers' monies, keeping a mindful and thoughtful view <coughs> on the spending of the Township Board, and whereas Robert Salka has been supportive of township staff and their abilities to care for the residents of our township, and whereas Robert Salka has been an exceptional member of the Board of Trustees, always willing to share his insight on matters during discussion. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Township Board of Trustees hereby wishes to formally state its undying appreciation to Robert Salka on behalf <coughs> of the residents of Richmond Township and the Board, citing that he has given an enormous amount of time, wisdom, energy, and passion to the position. And there's no discussion, I'm just going to go ahead and take a vote on your motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Aye
but that aren't technical positive. So I'm not certain that that screening uh, in and by itself makes a lot of makes a lot of difference. Um, I also remind people all the time that the temperature is a snapshot of time. So if I take the temperature now, uh, you know, it may be normal. If I take the temperature 30 minutes from now, it may no longer be normal. Uh, so we use, you know, we tell people that they feel fever out, feverish, uh, things of that nature that we, you know, that we want them to notify, well, we want them not to work to start with, but if it occurs during the work day, we want them to notify their immediate supervisor and then be sent home, you know, kind of thing. So, so long answer to your question, I guess, but, uh, you know, I, I think it would be uh, worthwhile for the township to um, probably have its employees on a daily basis fill out a medical. Uh, I think they're on the to No, I will get a hold of Chris tomorrow, though. It's a pretty uh, brief yeah. questionnaire, and I know uh, we keep them in, you know, just the days through their day of having time. Okay, so if you've got something, you have, the other thing that uh, I remember recently that probably would be a good idea is we did develop uh, and provide to all the employees, you know, kind of a COVID uh, workplace, you know, safety plans for the workplace, which was something that, that was required uh, previously by the governor, but now is um, being enforced by OSHA kind of related rules. Uh, and one of the uh, areas that some people have been found deficient in is having a log, a, a log of some kind that people actually uh, were, were trained or read that down. And so, like I say, again, with only like three employees in the building, uh, probably if you have Chris to that, uh, Cindy, have, her, have a log that says they looked, you know, they looked at or viewed the, uh, the, the workplace safety plan for the township. Uh, you know, in that way, if you were to get a visit uh, for whatever reason from an investigator or inspector from from BioSha, uh, you know, you would have that log. Okay, I'll I'll have a look at this one. I got a question from Jeff. Yes, sir. Let's look at down the road in the next thirty days. If the positivity rate is increasing in the community. Do you have any thoughts or recommendations as to how this board should conduct its next meeting, whether it should be in person or by Zoom? Um, so, you know, I don't have a crystal ball about what things are going to look like, but right now they don't look good. Um, if this board had the ability uh, to uh, conduct the meeting uh, remotely, I think that would be reasonable. I'm not certain what. Our ability is to do that or not do that. Um, but I think that might not be a bad idea. Uh, I would say the other thing that OSHA is um, really pushing out there, and probably a good workplace safety uh, plan, is basically if an employee can work remotely, uh, they should. And, and, and there is some question as to whether or not that may turn into a shale here in the next few days. So, so right now it's kind of a strongly recommended to employ work remotely, yes or no. Um, but like I say, what it comes down to is a, if the employee can work remotely, they shall work in that capacity uh, and not be a reporter to the office. It will also be a matter for this board to, to then uh, you know, have to take up and make a decision uh, with regards to it. Uh, again, you, you have to determine, you know, can an employee function remotely or not? And I don't because I'm in the office every day running your, your business operation, I don't have the answer for you for it. I do know that we did address by Bible's that helps with that we the CARES money. We can give them an ability to be able to get into the software that they generally get into from home. So that can certainly be helpful and offer them more of an opportunity to do that. Unfortunately, with this uh, virus, uh, things are getting uh, far worse. Um, the, the hospitals are filling again. Uh, the, the numbers of the hospitals are going up exponentially. You see the numbers of the news media reports every night. Uh, I, I don't pay quite as much attention to that as I do what's going on in, in, in the hospitals and what we're seeing uh, here uh, with our own EMS vehicles where, um, you know, we have, we're seeing more cases now than we do in April. Yet we're all still 
uh, at public meetings the other day. Uh, so I, I just question the, the, the um, uh, you, know, you know, whether or not we should still uh, really be doing that uh, at, at this point. Um, so I, I think we're gonna have to make some promise and tough decisions going forward. Uh, I don't, um, there does not seem to be uh, any likelihood that things will happen at higher levels of government that are going to stop us. So I, I think uh, I think we may have to uh, you know make some judgments locally with regard to the safety of our, our staff and uh, our community. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Officer Jeff. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to take a couple minutes to take so thank Supervisor City Greenia for working diligently with her fellow board members to accomplish so much during her nine years as a supervisor. Each year as a board, we collectively set a list of goals and objectives. In the city's leadership, she brings us together and guides us towards fulfilling them. The most recent accomplishment securing the neighborhood piece of property with the intent of developing a park for our township residents. She's worked diligently to make this happen, and I'm sure she will continue working in her new role to ensure its completion. Cindy has served her community for more than, this is where I wasn't sure, 30 plus years? 22. 22? 22 years. And held every electable position possible, except for trustee. And thanks to this most recent election, she will have the honor of continuing her service to the people of Richmond Township. I look forward to continuing to work with her, along with our new supervisor, Krista Bose, our new treasurer, Cheryl Salka, and our new trustee, Cindy, of course. And of course, can't forget our deputies. Where would we be without them? <laughs> Definitely need them. Laura Stewart and Bob Laura. Thanks, Kathy. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, um, I just want to take a moment and thank everyone for letting me be your super for the last nine years. I'm not going to be quite as eloquent as Bob because I'm still going to be here uh, hanging around and um, putting my two cents in, but I really appreciate your faith in me and hope that I can continue to do a good job as a trustee. Um, next we have general public comments. Yes, good evening, Jeff Garrett, State Representative. Uh, I want to bring up some just some points and you know was finally speaking for public comment we talked about COVID and uh, things coming out of the state. Uh, in regard to COVID, the legislature has passed a number of pieces of legislation to assist on a number of items that had to be done by statute. One thing was uh, planning for keeping COVID patients out of nursing homes, which is one of the places we were having some of the highest death rates. Uh, long issues with the governor on that. Understand that although in this state we got a guy Apparently the, the pattern was the governor passing executive orders uh, for this health crisis. Uh, in reality, many states do that through their agencies, uh, you know, their health department, and so forth. And the legislature has, you know, many years ago, empowered the public health officer through the public health code to uh, be prepared for pandemics. So in reality, while we're the, the issue of, of our governor, the, the Supreme Court decision, the governor didn't have the power to do it through the general the uh, powers of the governor act. In, in reality, uh, the public health officer was really the person who was supposed to be taking the lead on pandemic issues. We do have a bill and a plan in the legislature which is focused on counties. Uh, the governor's plan was based on regions, and we tend to think that uh, counties are in a better position to look at their unique needs. Uh, that Sheboygan is different than Macomb County and that maybe we should put a little more focus on our county health departments that fundamentally that's what they can get ready for. You know, the county health departments, this is what uh, the people in those, that those departments should be in that for a year have been thinking about. What am I going to do if there's a pandemic? So I think, it, as opposed to regions, you know, I think our focus, and this is the public caucus has been a plan to say, we want more focus at the county, at the county government, to focus on their particular needs and issues, knowing that, like you said, Avoiding this different than Macomb County. Uh, so, just kind of sharing with you that uh, you know, the legislature isn't a sleeping wheel on this issue. Uh, you know, but, but keep in mind that a lot of this is going to come down to individual behaviors uh, and what people do uh, to protect themselves and not 
spread and exposure. And although maybe this is maybe this is worse for the flu, but a lot of the things that we that we are encouraging from CDC's guidelines is really a lot of the same things that we said for the flu, which was you know don't go to work if you're sick, clean your hands, you know, don't sneeze on people, you know, clean the doorknobs. I mean a lot of those same things uh, we, that we're saying. That, so it's a lot of this also comes down to personal behavior. Uh, but as I did want to kind of share that you know that the legislature's not asleep on this issue. That, you know, we, we are we continue to work trying to work with our governor. Uh, it'll be a team approach to protect our citizens. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jeff, for coming out tonight. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Public comments? <clears throat> My name is Steve Murphy. I'm the person on the road. I want to talk about the Guardian, the Lofts, the Army, and Fire Contract. The potential loss of life due to the loss of this contract to uh, Richmond Township residents. His opinion is also shared by the Armada Supervisor, John Paderak. Armada can be on scene within five minutes due to the people manning this fireball 24 by 7. I did a FOIA and from uh, Richmond City, it take over 10 minutes to get there um, when they had a fire. They had two fires already. Um, I also want to talk about two documents I have. I have a proposal from Almeida uh, Township dated January 21st for 60, 70, and 80,000 dollars of fire coverage for three years. I sent to Richmond Township on January 21st. A letter dated uh, May 14th from Richmond Supervisor to Almeida offering a three-year contract, 40, 42, 45. Also mentioned that Richmond could not afford the new rate being offered. And I so sort of, when I read that, and then uh, we talked about getting that land, and then your budget, you had a surplus of 58000 You have the money to pay for this uh, Richmond contract. According to the post office, there are 485 residents on rural Route 4 that uh, our data used to cover. I know that because I paid for uh, stuff being sent there. So I think Mr. DeVos's first primary thing should be to get this contract renegotiated. I also saw that you heard a firm, uh, I heard a firm uh, for the mutual aid thing. Uh, K.H. Attorneys at Law, and I was looking at the bills and I did not see any uh, checks made out to them. The only people that's going to uh, come out on top of this will be the attorneys and not the people of Richmond Township or the people of Armenia. I firmly believe that we have to make an end to this. And in my current election, I did get 200 people from that I made a district. My opponent got close to 800, which I had seen. But I had over 200 families in that area who responded to my thoughts and agreed with me that they are at risk. So I hope that we can do something. I really believe Mr. DeVos's claim should do. We should get this Army of Fire contract taken care of. That's my two cents. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to start this by thanking the entire board for a job well done. You guys should be proud of what you've accomplished through all the years. Lori Stewart, thank you for having me back. You are truly a dear friend. Madam Supervisor, sorry, but you know I had to do this. <laughs> Who knew nine years ago? When you were appointed a supervisor, where this twisting, turning road would take you. But here you are tonight, officially leaving your last meeting. As I was thinking what to say tonight, I thought, what is the one word that you could use, that I could use, that would best describe you? Many came to mind, but the one I thought fit the best was integrity. If you look up the definition, it 
it says, adherence to moral and ethical principles, soundness of moral character, and honesty. You have lived those qualities basically your whole life, but most definitely the last nine years as supervisor. Whenever there were issues, you never waffled. You dove in at first and tried to find an amicable solution so it would be a win-win for everyone. As we all know, that can't always happen. So while you didn't always do the popular thing, you did what was best for the greater good of Richmond Township. Because of your 22 years, 22 plus years here, in one position or another, the township holds a special place in your heart. I see you bristle whenever someone says something negative about it, and you strive to make it a great place for everyone. I watch you get ridiculed at meetings, and my personal favorite on social media. But you never wavered and always took the high road. You handle it much better than I. No one knows about the sleepless nights, the, the early, and I do mean early morning emails. The lunch breaks spent on the phone, the late night texts and phone calls, and my favorite, the problems that always came up when we were on vacation. I would say, just let it go until we get home. And you always said the same two words, I can't. Not because you couldn't, but that's not who you are. There's a problem, let's get it fixed, what is your thought process? You've had many accomplishments in these nine years, but I think the one you're probably one of the most proud of is the recent purchase of the seven acres for some sort of recreation slash park area. Kudos to the entire world for that. I look forward to teaching my grandmother how to play baseball here. There was one thing that always stood out the most, and that is your passion for the EMS. Who would have ever thought that Little Richmond Township would co-own the best EMS in the state? Who was to Director White? Some of your favorite meetings were when new recruits were sworn into duty. I think the proudest I have seen you was when you cut the ribbon on the station one you built. No one could wipe the smile from your face that day. So thank you for your selfless work you have done here the past nine years. And I can assure you it is not going unnoticed by the people here. Do me a favor when you walk up to the car tonight. Hold your head up and know that you did in fact make a difference. Thank you. I love you. Thank you.